Hello, I'm joined by Emma Chow, lead on the food initiative at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Hi Emma, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'd like to begin by first asking you to tell me a little bit about the new plastics economy global commitment, which you launched uh, recently. Yeah, so the global commitment was launched a year ago this week actually at Our Oceans um, in 2018. And it was launched by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation in collaboration with UN Environment. And so we're now a year in and we've aligned a group of now it's over 400 organizations, NGOs, companies, consumer goods forum, um, governments, all behind this common vision for a circular economy plastics and this vision where we are innovating um, so that all plastics that we're using can be um, reused or recycled or composted. Um, we're eliminating the unnecessary single-use plastics and we're circulating whatever is used. Um, so that's really the vision and so these, these organizations um, have committed to ambitious goals for 2025. Actually yesterday at Our Oceans um, 2019, we launched the first progress report, which is creating an unprecedented level of transparency. 200 companies actually um, aligning with consistent metrics and measurement um, to be reporting their progress and giving some examples of what are some best practices and really showcasing the work and efforts that companies are doing out there and really leading the industry to follow. Thanks. It's honestly been an impressive progress um, since the last October. And I wanted to build on specifically CGF uh, because the CGF publicly endorsed the new plastics economy global commitment vision uh, when it was launched. And um, I, I wanted to ask you, how do you see the potential of the CGF to help you achieve your mission to stop plastic waste? And as well, what does this mean for the work you're doing on to redesign the food system? Yeah, so of course we were very happy to have um, CGF on board and endorsing the vision. And I think what's really important whenever we think of systemic issues in something like plastic packaging, it's no single organization or company, industry player can solve it all. And so when we have these moments and opportunities, things like the Consumer Goods Forum that actually bring together a collective of industry players and really build that um, energy and, and movement behind the, the whole momentum that we're seeing, right? We now have 400 companies and, and or organizations rather, including many companies, many who are in the Consumer Goods Forum. So I'm sure having that endorsement um, further propels that industry um, momentum. So that's, that's great. And I think on food, it's a similar story, right? We're looking at food and we're, we're now just kicking off our work. We launched in June at the Eat Forum and following in the footsteps of our work with the new plastics economy to really drive systemic change of how we're producing food so that's in a regenerative way, how we're designing out waste out of the entire system. Um, and it's very relevant, again, to Consumer Goods Forum, um, knowing that so many of the companies involved are also related to food. Um, so with that in mind, as we move forward, how can we, again, be tapping into these sorts of relationships, platforms, um, to maximize our engagement and ultimately impact? It's very valuable to have such a collaborative platform for all of the different actors involved in the field. And um, my next question, um, in your opinion, the, why is collaboration between governments, industry and the public sector so vital to drive solutions? Yeah, so what I've been speaking about quite a bit so far is, again, looking at system level change and having that perspective. You need the cross value chain within the private sector, the industry side. You need that collaboration and you need to be working in new ways. But what you also need is to be working in new ways across sectors and between the government, public sector and private sector. Um, I think this is demonstrated with our plastics work again at the local level. So we have the global level with the global commitment, but then we also have country level interventions which with a network of plastic packs around the world. So we have that in three 
countries right now in Chile, the UK, and France, and in development in about 15 to 20 other countries and continents around the world. Um, and it's really the government players who are playing a big role in that and other NGOs. So in France, it's one of the ministries that's really led it, kicked it off. And there's also a dozen companies involved in NGOs. So the government in that sense, at the local level, is really driving that change and helping set, as we like to say, setting the enabling conditions. Because you need, you need those private industry um, sector-led solutions, but if the playing field isn't suitable and conducive, um, it's not going to work and it's not going to be scaled. So that's where government can play a big role. And on food, similarly, we're taking a big emphasis on the role of cities because 80% of the world's food will be eaten in cities by 2050. So cities as places have a big role to play. They have this big opportunity to transform their role in today's food system to move from being what's linear and damaging and wasteful and polluting to one that's circular and, and healthy both for people and for ecosystems and the economy long term. Um, and again, we're working with the municipalities, so the public sector and government officials who can be using their public procurement purchasing power, but also their policy making abilities and then the private sector innovators and NGOs. So that's where we see that similar thread through all of our work. Of there needs to be collaboration across sectors and government of various levels geographically have many, many roles to play. Great, thank you so much for your time today and it's amazing to see this initiative grow and I wish you the best uh, outcomes for the future. Thank you, thanks so much for having me.